Fun fact about me, I actually have a flat spot on the top of my head that I can balance pretty much anything on. So I'm gonna do my whole intro like this. Thanks for joining me on my channel today. We're going to be doing some portrait photo retouching all in Photoshop. We've never done this before on the channel. I'm so excited to share my tips with you because this is one of those things where a little goes a long way. Okay, I still like my portraits to look natural. I want my models to still look like people. It's important to still be able to see some texture and some pores on your skin, okay? You're also probably wondering what's on top of my head. Well, we're at home today. We're editing from home. So we needed a laptop. That's the sponsor of today's video. You wanna feel the flat spot on my head? Why not? Touch it. It's right here. Whoa. Now I don't need to tell you that 2020 has been well, quite the journey. We've all found a new appreciation for our homes, and that includes adjusting our workflow for a more cozy vibe. When I'm not in the studio working, you'll most likely find me here with my new LG Gram 14 inch two in one laptop. First of all, 14 inches. A lot of times 13 inches can feel too small and 15 or 17 can feel too big. 14 inches is a great happy medium between being super portable for lounging on the couch working away, but still having enough screen space to have all your work organized and laid out so you can work efficiently. And it only weighs two and a half pounds, which is half the weight of Luna. So whether I'm in bed watching movies or I'm on the go, carrying a heavy laptop is not something I need to worry about. Seriously, in comparison to other laptops in this range that weigh around four pounds, this will be a load off, literally. And as you can tell by the name, the coolest feature of this laptop is, well, that. This laptop fully converts into a tablet and includes an LG stylus pen that offers super precise tracking and 4,096 levels of pressure. Let's talk about that for a second. You can literally go from a full-fledged laptop workhorse to a super immersive tablet and stylus experience, all within one device. When it comes to performance, my spec in particular includes an Intel i7 quad-core 1.8 gigahertz processor that can turbo boost up to 4.9 gigahertz. That's that's a mouthful. 16 gigabytes of RAM and a one terabyte SSD. Basically, it handles all my day-to-day -day admin work and my heavy-duty video editing work all in one. With the fast SSD hard drive, quad-core processor, and 16 gigabytes of RAM, I can easily edit any of my YouTube videos. With all that said, this laptop is a great, portable, and powerful choice as a work-from-home solution. So let's get into the editing. First thing we're gonna do, guys, is we're going to copy this layer by dragging it over to the new layer button down here, and we're gonna do that twice. So we're gonna rename the second layer color, and we're going to rename the third layer texture. Now we're going to go up here and add a Gaussian blur to the color layer, and I'll bring that to right about there looks good. A good rule of thumb is that you want to put the Gaussian blur at about half of the amount of megapixels you took that photo with, or you could just eyeball it. It's really up to you. You just don't want to overdo it. This is where a lot of the skin tone evening is going to come into play. Now let's move over to the texture layer. So go up to image, hit apply image, and for an 8-bit versus a 16-bit image, the numbers here are gonna be a little different. So first, let's talk about an 8-bit image. So you wanna make sure that your scale is set at two and your offset is at 128. And then for a 16-bit image, you'll want your scale to be set at two and your offset at zero. You'll wanna make sure that this right here is set to the color layer. Now, just for the sake of being organized, let's group those two layers together. And now open that up and just select the color layer right here. So this is gonna be the most time consuming process. So I'll speed it up for you once I show you what we're doing, because this is really where most of the skin softening and evening out of your image is going to happen. So select the healing brush tool over in the left panel over here. And let's start by sampling a highlight area just under her eye. So you'll do that by holding down Alt and then just clicking with your mouse, or in my case, I can use my stylus pen. So what you'll wanna do after you sample that 
color or that highlighted area, you'll just want to do kind of little short swooping motions with the pen or with your mouse kind of like this. So the intention would be that you're evening out the highlighted areas or bringing in more light into some of the areas that has a little bit more shadow. You never really wanna pull a color that isn't too far away from what you're editing. So you'll always wanna sample right next to the area that you're editing. So in this case, I just wanna bring some light into a little bit of her very minimal eye bag, okay? We're just going to smooth that out and on the highlight of her cheek, you'll wanna keep sampling constantly just to make sure that you have a really natural edit. You don't wanna use a really big brush for this. You definitely wanna use a very small brush. So really that's all you're doing is you're sampling and brushing, making these little strokes, and just smoothing out areas that are a little too in the shadow just to give her face a very even, complexion. Even some of the areas on the model that have some slight texture can benefit from some evening out in the color layer before we even get to the texture layer. So I've done enough retouching at this point that I can show you kind of a midway point. So here is a before and after. Before after. You can see that's already making a huge difference to this image. All right, so let's move on to the texture layer. What's happening here is you're adjusting the texture on her skin. So that's pores, fine lines, things like that. Joelle has beautiful skin, so that's making her life a lot easier today. But like everyone, she does have a few little scars here and there that we could just take out to show you how this works. Even I have a couple chicken pox scars. We've all been there, guys. So we're going to start by selecting the patch tool over here. And we're just gonna circle some of the really small texture areas over here, a few pores. And all you do is just drag that over to a spot that is right next to it, that has a little bit less texture. And that just evens out that area ever so slightly. So this is what you would do if your model had a pimple, for example. Now that's already making a big difference, but again, super subtle because we're using really small selections. You wouldn't necessarily want Want to use too big of a selection because that can look a little unnatural. And our goal here is to do very natural retouching. If you want to adjust any fine lines in your image, this is how you'll do it. So select the healing brush tool and similar to on the color layer, all you're going to do is sample from an area right next to what you're about to edit. And then with a very, very small brush, no bigger than what you're editing, you're just going to draw over that line. And again, if you've already forgotten, you just hold down the Alt key to sample and then draw over whatever you're trying to edit. And by using a really small brush, this does a really, really good job, a very natural job. Now I'm just going to edit a couple more things here, but I'll speed up the process for you. Now we're going to remove some of the little distracting hairs that are covering Joelle's face. So in order to do that, we're going to make a new layer and select the healing brush tool again. And again, with a super, super small brush, <laughs> this is the key, using a very small brush to make minimal edits that don't really have enough room to be seen. So we'll sample from an area right next to the hair. And then some people prefer to do the entire hair in one stroke, whereas I prefer to do it in small sections. So if it makes a mistake, it's easier to correct. I just think that it does a better job this way. That's my personal opinion. So I'll kind of do little streaks of the hair one by one until the entire thing is completely gone. And if I make a mistake, I can just undo it and then keep going. Or if you prefer, you could always do each hair on a separate layer, totally up to you. Depends how organized you like to be in your sessions. Now, Joelle also has a few really small flakes of mascara, so I'll use the same technique to get rid of those. And I'll get rid of the rest of the hairs for you, just so you don't have to sit with me. It is a little time consuming. I'll speed up the process. Now let's add some contrast and luminance back into Joelle's skin because we've evened everything out quite a bit, but I really want Joelle's skin to glow. So here's how we do that. Let's select the curves down here. Now let's use this two-in-one laptop the way it was designed. Also as a tablet. 
Now just make sure this little hand tool is selected. If you're not familiar with how curves works, basically everything on the right of this graph is your highlights, everything on the left is your darks and your shadows. So by having this hand tool selected, we can literally just hover over whatever part of this image we want and an associated little point will pop up on that graph. So first I wanna adjust the highlights. So by clicking on this highlighted portion of Joelle's forehead, we can see that a little point has popped up on this graph and just by dragging it upwards, that brings up the highlights. So we'll do the same thing with the shadows and bring them down. So now you can see one, Joelle's skin and the colors in this image look totally wrong. And the intention was that we were only going to be affecting the luminance of Joelle's skin. So we'll do that by selecting the blending mode, luminosity. Makes perfect sense, doesn't it? And now, because right now this layer is adjusting the entire image, we really only wanted to affect Joelle's skin on her face, we'll make use of this mask. So basically how masks work in Photoshop, if you're not familiar, black conceals, white reveals. We're gonna make use of this keyboard again now. There we go and we're going to inverse the mask, making it black. As I just said, black conceals, white reveals, so we're going to select the brush tool and paint over Joelle's face with a white brush, and that's going to reveal the mask and reveal the curves that we just did. Now that looks a little intense, so all you need to do if you're finding that this effect is quite dramatic for your photo as well, is just change the opacity of that layer and bring it down to wherever you feel it looks good to you. And that looks about right. And if you wanna be even more precise and there are still a few areas, you wanna just take control of this edit, go in, dodge and burn, go back to your color layer and you can do exactly that. So with the brush tool, you're just going to sample from a color that's in your highlights, paint in the highlights, and if you want to adjust the shadows, select a color, again, by pressing Alt in the shadows and just color in those shadows. I just like saying color. That's basically what it is though. Paint in those shadows, you know? I like to use a bit of a larger brush for this. I'll speed up my dodging and burning for you. Okay, now I'll show you guys the final image. So here is before and after. Her skin looks smooth, glowy, effortless, still very natural looking. You can still see some of that texture in her skin, which is what I personally think adds a lot to a portrait. I still wanna be able to see her pores a little bit to know that she's a real human, you know? <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked this video, please give it a like down below. It actually does make a huge difference. Subscribe if you want to see more videos from me about photo and video editing tutorials and a whole bunch of fun stuff and hit the notification bell to get notified when I post new videos. Bye.